The year is 1962. Ford really needs a good small block V8 design to compete with Chevy's small block V8 design. This V8 was to replace their Y block design, which was plagued with top end oiling issues. Ford's all new V8 design would make its debut in 1962 and would be found in some of the best cars Ford ever made. In this episode, we will cover the 221, 255, 260, 289, 302, and 351. It's important to note that we are going from base horsepower to max horsepower. Born stroke sizes may be rounded, and I'm totally with you. I wish sources would give the actual numbers, but they don't. And also, we are not getting into all of the different race versions in this episode. They will be featured in a different episode, because if we did all the race versions, Versions, we would be here literally all night. The Ford small block engine featured an over square design, meaning that the bore size is larger than the stroke size. Thin wall construction of gray iron to cut down on weight. Larger valves with reduced reciprocation speed. Shorter connecting rods, which allowed for higher RPM. Wedge shaped combustion chambers found in the heads. This engine has plenty of iron content in the main webs, which allow for the elimination of the block skirts, which also reduced weight, could be had in two Venturi or four Venturi configurations. The small block was produced in two foundries or engine plants, Cleveland, Ohio and Windsor, Ontario. The 221 and 260 were made in Cleveland only. 289, 302 were made in both which were verified on engine as CF for Cleveland, WF for Windsor. The 351 Windsor was only made in Windsor. Introduced in 1962, 221 cubic inch displacement. It was often called the Fairlane V8 overhead valve V8 3.6 liters. It's good for 145 horsepower, 4,400 RPM. 216 pound-feet or 293 newton meters at 2200 rpm with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 2.87 inches compression was 8.7 to 1. this engine weighs 470 pounds years this engine was used was between 1962 through 1963 it could be found in the Fairlane or the mercury meteor with its two-year production from 1962 to 1963, 371,000 units were made. Also introduced in 1962, 260 cubic inch displacement V8 overhead valve, 4.3 liters. It's good for 164 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 258 pound-feet or 350 newton meters at 2200 RPM with a bore of 3.80 inches and a stroke of 2.9 inches. Compression was 8.8 .8 to 1. This engine weighs just a little bit more at 482 pounds. Years this engine was used was between 1962 to 1964 for Ford, but they would go up until 1966 in the Sunbeam Tiger. It could be found in the Fairlane, the Falcon, the Mustang. And I know I said we're not going to get into any of the race engines, but this is an exception. There was a special rally version of the Ford Falcon, Mercury Comet, also early AC Cobras. Hypo version of the 260 called the XHP 260. It featured higher compression, hotter camshaft timing, upgraded connecting rods, larger diameter valve stems, stronger valve springs, four barrel carburetor. It was good for 260 horsepower. That's one horsepower per cubic inch for anybody counting back home at 5,800 RPM. 269 pound feet or 365 Newton meters at 4,800 RPM. Everything else is the same. Only about 100 of these babies were ever made. Next up, an absolute legend. Introduced in 1963, 289 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 4.7 liters. 
It's good for anywhere between 195 horsepower up to 225 horsepower, 4,800 RPM, up to 305 pound feet or 414 newton meters at 3,200 RPM with a bore of four inches and a stroke of 2.87 inches. Compression is anywhere between 8.7 to 10 to one. This engine weighs 506 pounds. They made this engine at both the Windsor and Cleveland plants. Cleveland pumped out around 3.5 million of these engines, whereas the Windsor plant only made about 800,000. Years this engine was used was between 1963 and 1967. It could be found in the Ford Mustang, Mercury Comet, amongst many other cars. The 289 had a hypo version. It could make anywhere between 271 all the way up to 306 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs, up to 329 pound-feet or 446 newton meters at 4,200 RPM with a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 2.87 inches. Compression was 10.5 to 1. It featured dual point advanced distributor, advanced timing, solid lifters. Years this engine was used, 1963 through 1967. It could be found on the fair lanes available in the Mustang Shelby GT350, about 25,000 were built. Up next, an absolute staple to the point that Ford Racing is still building this engine. 302 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, V8, 5 liters. It's good for anywhere between 150 to 315 horsepower at 4,600 RPM up to 333 pound feet or 451 newton meters at 3800 RPM with a bore of four inches and a stroke of three inches. Compression was nine and a half to one or less. Five main bearings. The years this engine was used was between 1968 to 2000, but it's still available as a crate engine. As previously mentioned, it was found in everything from the Ford F-150 to the Mustang to the Ford LTD, Lincoln Town Car. 1986, Ford started putting EFI fuel injection. By 1988, it was on everything. Before getting into the next engine on our list, it's important to note that Ford made three very different versions of the 351. The 351 Cleveland, which was built from 1969 through 1974, when the Cleveland was discontinued, Ford needed an engine that size to bridge the gap because the 351 Windsor, for whatever reason, wasn't being produced in the numbers that Ford needed them. It's important to note that Ford is building the 351 Windsor while all of this is going on. Ford needed more 351, so they decided to make a 351 modified by taking the Ford 400 block and installing a 351 Windsor crankshaft. The 351 modified was produced from 1975 through 1979. Both the Cleveland and the 351 modified are in a different engine family called the Ford 335 engine family, which will get its own episode one day. Let's talk about the 351 Windsor introduced in 1969 and produced one way or another until 2010. 351 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 5.8 liters. This engine featured a 1.3 inch taller deck or raised deck. It could make anywhere between 140 to 300 horsepower at 5400 RPM. 380 pound feet or 515 newton meters at 3400 RPM with a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is anywhere between 8.8 .8 to 11 to 1. It's important to note that blocks before 1974 are heavier because they were casted with more metal. Also goes to one piece rear main in 1983. So before the engines before 1983 used a two piece main seal. Years this engine was used was between 1969 through 1997, but they still produced it until about 2010. In 1988, fuel injection was added. Roller camshaft and lifters were added in 1994. It was found in everything from the Ford Galaxy to the Lincoln Mark VI. 
In the late 70s, Ford would reduce the bore of the 302 because they kind of sort of wanted to phase it out. The new engine had a displacement of 255 cubic inches. 255 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 4.2 liters. It's good for anywhere between 115 to 122 horsepower, 3400 RPM, 209 pound feet or 283 newton meters at 2400 RPM with a bore of 3.7 inches and a stroke of 3 inches. Compression was 8.2 to 1. Years this engine was used was only two, 1980 through 1982. It could be found in Fox body platforms such as the Mustang, Mercury Capri, Ford Thunderbird, Ford Granada. 253,000 units were produced. Ford would bring back the 302 after this engine was dropped. In the 1980s, Ford would make an all new engine family to replace the Ford small block Ford would call the new engine the Ford Modular V8 engine. But honestly, that's another engine episode for another day. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. If you don't like any of these selections, feel free to write in your choice. That's totally acceptable. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1963 Ford Fairlane or 1966 Ford Mustang Fastback or 1969 Ford Chirino. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. On to the second scenario. 1987 Lincoln LSC or 1980 Lincoln Town Coupe or 1982 Lincoln Mark VI. Once again, I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Just a hint on that song. It's not a decade old. It's a bit newer. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!